All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tony. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today about uh, aviation and functional programming. Um, so basically, uh, well, first of all, um, who am I? I work at that desk just out there. I work for CSIRO, uh, formerly NICTA, or Data61 as well. Um, so uh, I write Haskell mostly in my day job. Um, and lately um, I've been writing software related to aviation, so I'm just going to show you some of that. Um, George has already caused you pain in the brain, am I right? Yes. Um, I'm not, that's, I mean I don't want to do it twice, so I'm going to make this a little bit, uh, it's going to be a little bit more fun. Um, and I promise, sometimes people think I break that promise, <coughs> but they accuse me of that. They said it wasn't going to hurt. Um, so, um, basically, uh, I used to live here, it's a bit hard to see, but this is North Brisbane here. Um, there's our Red Cliff Aerodrome there. Um, a bit further north is the Vulture, Vulture Aerodrome. And uh, I, this used to happen to me occasionally. It's so, like I should stop at uh, Red Cliff or the Vulture one day. <clears throat> and now I live near here. And this is Archfield Airport on the south side of Brisbane. Uh, has four runways, and I live a bit just west of that airport. <clears throat> um, this is uh, a circuit pattern of the uh, main runway there at uh, Archerfield. So you can see there, there's the Ipswich motorway. My house is out there. Um, I assume that sometimes I have to do this because there's a slow aircraft in front. Um, and uh, I would see this on my way home <laughs> as I was riding along Ipswich motorway. I see this, and like, there's me there. Not really. <laughs> um, and, and then I would do this. Um, so there's me taking, so there's runway 28 right here. No, it's not really. I don't know where this is. Um, but <laughs> it's somewhere not very safe. <laughs> good anyway. shot, though. Pardon? Good shot. It is a good shot. Yeah, it's a good haircut, too. <laughs> Um, and so I decided, okay, that's enough. And then I did this in uh, six or whatever it is, more than six months ago, nine months ago. Uh, I did this. And uh, my wife was like, what about that? And I said, that. <laughs> <laughs> that was salt. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so, anyway, as it stands today, um, I have uh, 30 something hours and I, I have a flight exam coming up. I have an exam actually on Thursday. And uh, the argument is resolved and uh, that's going to happen. So, this is a story about some of the things that I've learned in aviation. Um, it's, it's uh, like I said, it's not going to be one of my usual talks about algebraic structures like uh, George has already done. <clears throat> so, just to tell you a few things about aviation, it's uh, federally regulated um, by an organisation called CASA. Um, and there's another organisation called Air Services Australia that provides such things as well. Um, and we don't want this to happen. So we all know about the New South Wales and Queensland Railway <laughs> incompatibility. Uh, we don't want this to happen. You know, imagine if Australia said aeroplanes must be upside down, New Zealand said no, they mustn't. Um, what would happen at the airspace border? So we have these international organisations, um, and mostly uh, this one here takes care of that, the IKO. So <clears throat> in Australia, like I said, it's federally regulated. Um, we have, uh, well, we still have, but it's kind of deprecated, I guess, the Civil Aviation Act. Uh, oh, sorry, no, that's not deprecated. No, it's the CAR that's deprecated. Um, and then uh, under that is the Civil Aviation Safety Regulation. Oh yeah, it says it right there. Right, yeah. Okay? So, <clears throat> it's going to become real, relevant in a minute. So, you probably can't read that, but I'll, I'll read it to you. It basically says, if you're a pilot, you have to have a logbook. You have to log all of your flights. Um, person holds a pilot license or a certificate of validation of overseas flight crew license that is equivalent to a pilot license commits an offence if the person does not keep a personal logbook in accordance with this regulation. Penalty, 50 penalty units. 
they must record their full name and date of birth, and so on. So this is in the uh, in the uh, part 61, the CISR. There's an obvious question that uh, we programmers would ask if we were adhering to this, this regulation, and that is, are electronic leg boggles okay? And the answer is yes. Under 61, 365, it says, you probably can't read it, it says, uh, if the holder's personal logbook is kept in an electronic form, a requirement to reduce the logbook is met if A, the holder produces a printed, printed copy of the logbook. Um, aviation loves printers, by the way. Um, and each page is certified by the holder that it's a true copy. So it's like, yes, I certify this thing, this is true. Electronic logbooks are okay. So, hey, of course, <laughs> of course this is going to happen. So I just typed into Google, you know, uh, aviation forum logbooks um, and just screenshotted a few comments. This person here uses an Excel spreadsheet and coupled with Dropbox it works well. You can get free copies upon request. This person here uses Google Sheets. Um, there's a software proprietary thing called Log10. Uh, apparently it's sexy and uh, it may be overqualified, whatever. Um, so <laughs> this, this person prefers Log10 Pro to Fourflight. Fourflight's another one that's um, it's, um, based in America. I still keep a paper one um, and I'm only a private. Um, it just means that they don't, they, don't, uh, they don't do piloting for commercial reasons. Um, but blah, blah, blah. This person loves Log10 Pro. This person hates Log10 Pro because of the cost and issues with syncing. Um, should have used Should have used <laughs> um, And this person, oh, okay, this is a response to a comment. This is a person is someone who writes the software. And they say, and, and what happened is someone, someone said, hey, I was using your excellent software and, and I, I, I flew from New Zealand to Tahiti and bang, what happened? Oh, we hate it. Um, you've crossed the international date line. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Um, and this was just a week ago. Um, so I've been doing this for a year now. Oh, sorry. Is anyone using Google Sheets? I've been using it for their logbook. Is, I've been doing it for a year. Um, saves automatically. It's free. Great solution. And the first comment here um, says, it's free right up until the moment you accidentally delete it and then discover Google Drive didn't automatically keep backup copies. Ask me how I know how. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think Cass is going to be very happy if I said, ah, oh, no, sorry. Um, I used this proprietary thing called Google Sheets and I lost it, whatever. And they asked for that printout. So <laughs> this is my response to that when I'm not flying. So basically, I'm going to set up some requirements for what I think a pilot logbook should be. First of all, data loss would be impossible. We all know how to do that, right? We are programmers, we use revision control. We all do, right? File copies. <laughs> laser. <laughs> File copies are revision control, right? Yeah. Which one? File copying. Yeah, File copying. Copy. Yeah. Workspace one, workspace file two. Dot one and file logbook dot zip <laughs> dot two. All right, so then I further assert that we should be able to take these values as first class and decompose them. Um, so for example, we could have a value of the type of aircraft that you know, talks about the properties of that aircraft and I could use that in my logbook, that value, I could pass it around and so on. I can have function arguments, I can close over other values, I can report arbitrarily. So a lot of these comments um, that I was making fun of talk about how great the reporting is. So, um, <clears throat> but that reporting is very specific. Um, as long as you like those reports, then you will find them great. I happen to like other kinds of reports. So as programmers, you know where I'm going. <clears throat> so, blog book should be written in Haskell, obviously. <laughs> Sums and products, um, and we should be querying them with lenses. Um, George talked about the lenses a little bit. Uh, we should have a zipper for navigating around that logbook. And uh, we should have a pretty printer for when CASA audits my logbook. Um, and I'll, of course, I'll have to print it to an actual printer. <coughs> Make sure our data does not disappear by using revision control. And uh, just be friendly by publishing open source things. I'm sure that someone will give me something really 
good in return, not Google spreadsheets. Um, not cool. All right, so here's a bit of code. Um, <clears throat> this is a bit of code out of my logbook. Um, so basically, uh, just to explain it, my logbook, so these A, Bs and Cs and Ds, just ignore those for a minute, or ignore them completely actually. Um, they're there because they actually are there. So I kind of tossed up and I thought, could I, I could tell everyone a bit of a lie and remove the A's and D's and C's and D's and look neater, but it's, that's a lie. So they are there. But basically, um, if I, so, so sorry, I should say every person who's a pilot um, has what's called an aviation reference number. Um, so that's in my logbook. So if I wanted to simply ask a, a simple query, which is what is my, what is the aviation reference number of a logbook? So I compose these lenses, and that is the list of digits. It's a list of digits. Um, I turn that prism into a, um, whatever it is, a getter, I think. Yeah, okay. yeah, so when I call re on it, so I take the prism of int to digit, I call, uh, I call re on it, it turns it now into a getter from list of digit to, uh, to int. Um, and then I ask for the ARM property of the aviator of the logbook from the logbook. And there's my ARM. Pretty simple. Uh, I'm sure the Google Spreadsheets one does that. It's not, not that hard. But, but um, basically, these are these are um, queries that are Haskell values. Um, set the digit at the index two of the arrow into five. I don't know why you would do that. I suppose you wanted to do that. Uh, so this here is a function from a logbook to a new logbook. So given a logbook, return a whole new logbook with the uh, digit set to five. So <clears throat> Uh, that that uh, operator there is uh, modify. So given D, D being the list of digits at index two, set five, and do that to the ARN of the aviator of the lock. So read from right to left when you see dots. <coughs> Uppercase the surname. Um, this <coughs> might be for pretty printing. I don't know why. You might want to uppercase the surname of the logbook owner again. Um, function from logbook to logbook uh, over that lens. I think that's a lens. Yes, it is. Turn every character into uppercase. <clears throat> um, aircraft from all flights. So just give me the list of all aircraft from all flights in the logbook. Uh, so this is a bit of a mouthful, this one, but uh, basically, uh, given the aircraft, the, the Underscore one is because the ABCD thing, just ignore that. So given the aircraft, the flight entry in the logbook, uh, fold over that. So I want to get every single one of those from the list of entries from the logbook, do it to my logbook. And I've got back a list of aircraft. Um, so that's the type of the thing. So I could evaluate that and it'll give me the list of aircraft. <coughs> uh, the first flight in the aircraft with that registration. Um, so again, it's a similar mouthful. Um, the point is, I can do these queries and I can, I can write programs that make these queries for me. <coughs> uh, returns me a matey flight, right? So I may not have ever um, had, had a flight in that aircraft registration, so it's a maybe aircraft flight. Um, here's all my exam results. So in my logbook goes my exams, I have exam entries. Um, I don't know, has anyone ever had to do that before when they're using lenses? So wrap up a getter, do the thing and then do run getter at the end. Um, there's reasons. Um, but you can kind of ignore that and just say given the result and the result maximum, so you know that out of that, run that function. On the exam entry, over all exam entries, for all, over all, all entries in the logbook, um, applied to my logbook. Um, and then that's it. So th again, this is just a program that I can um, all aircraft flights as pilot in command and, and so on. Oh yeah, this just says, um, so when, when you fill out a logbook entry, you say, uh, you write down the pilot in command, so the command entry, and make sure it's equal to that value, that constructor. Total day hours as pilot in command. Um, when I first wrote this logbook software, I made a mistake of thinking day and night is a sum. It's actually a product. So I could fly along at five o'clock. I'm still flying. It's now seven o'clock. So day hours and night hours, all in one flight. <clears throat> so basically, this just says get the day component of the day and, and night component. 
um, in command, and so on. And uh, it's four hours and eight tenths of an hour. Aviation is in tenths of an hour. And CASA comes along and says, hey, where's your logbook? And I go, no worries. Bam. Oh, and then print. <laughs> <coughs> All right, um, and just to kind of emphasize why I even care about all that is I want to be able to ask this question. All right, so I cannot do this of, my, of pretty much every other logbook thing I've ever asked, and this is, this is deliberately obtuse. And I'm asking, give me all flights where if the departure and arrival date is the same day in UTC, and the date of that month is a multiple of seven, I don't know, just seven, unless either was an intermediate flight past uh, Camden Airport, I think it's Camden, or the logbook owner was following the command for the first three legs of the flight, is between two hours and the total sum of hours for that pilot in command of dual flight in aircraft with that registration, give me all those flights. Now if I ask pretty much everyone to do that with their logbook, they would have to manually go through their logbook. And I'm just saying, I don't have to. I have a program that does it. All right, so th this is the point is, when you, know, you, you use these fancy ones and they give you reporting, that it's a specific kind of reporting. They won't give me that report. <coughs> I can write any report. Have you tried filing a bug for something? Have you tried filing a bug? Yeah, no. Um, I did have a complaint one day, and then they, they said, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what, what do you hate about it? You know, you can imagine everyone's getting excited over this latest thing, and it's like, I think it's crap. You know, you know how that goes. <laughs> One person that sells all the excited people is crap. Um, so, that's pilot of logbooks. Um, I'll now tell you, this, this is actually more of a whinge, actually. Um, more than any code. Um, so this is not technical, there's no code, and it's just whinging. All right, <clears throat> so actually I'll go and, I've just left something out here in my desk, I'll be right back. <laughs> 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 I'm going to show you one of these in a minute. So basically, what's uh, the uh, regulation section 175 there? Um, blah, blah, blah. Point E. Publication of visual navigation charts. There you go. So this is so that, you know there's a part 175, and this is the introduction to part 175. It tells me what it's going to be about. Um, a few other things: operating limitations and minimum safe altitude warning systems. Now, if I was to like write one myself, I would fall under regulation 175. Um, and uh, this is the old one, um, 233. Pilot in command of an aircraft must not commence a flight if he or she has received evidence, has not received evidence and taken such action as is necessary to ensure that, blah blah blah, point H, the aeronautical data and aeronautical information mentioned in blah 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 is carried in the aircraft and readily accessible to the flight crew. Yeah. The aeronautical data, readily accessible. <clears throat> so this is a visual terminal chart. So I'll, I'll tell you <laughs> about being readily accessible. So when I'm in the, this is my flight instructor here, we bump knees when we're flying along. So next time we go flying, we go, hey, can we make this readily accessible? <laughs> I don't think so. <clears throat> so that's not readily accessible. Um, that's a visual terminal chart, it's updated every three months. Similar to another chart, VNC, there's another one here. Another one? Yeah, two. We'll Faster around the aircraft cabin. Yeah, what if you need to look at both at the same time? You put them up on the windscreen for backlighting. <laughs> yeah. oh, no. I've got a I've got a folding thing going on. But if I need to sort of get if I need to fly past my fold, that's it. Sorry, I don't know where I am. <laughs> Alright. But as we're programmers, we would ask this question. Do they exist in electronic format? Yes they do. <laughs> one seven five. <clears throat> one four five. This regulation applies if a provider of the aeronautical data information system, I think that's sensible, 
publishes an aeronautical chart that includes aeronautical data or aeronautical information that relates to all the stuff that's on here. I have a friend who's a glider pilot. He used to live in New Zealand and he wrote a write in a publishing aeronautical data for New Zealand glider pilots. Um, and then he moved to Australia. And the, I think it's called the CIA in New, in New Zealand. Rang him up and said, hey, you're not allowed to do that. You're in violation of uh, this, their regulation. You're publishing aeronautical data. And he said, I don't live in New Zealand. I live in Australia. And uh, that's actually the same um, in Australia. So <clears throat> no problem. I'll just use the proof. We want to prove one, right? Like, you know, we don't want old Joe to say there's, there's not a mountain in the way when there is, and bang. We don't want that to happen. We want to prove ones. <laughs> but you have to use one of these, right? So this is on the CASA website, and it says, it's a bit hard to see, but basically gives you three options. One's called um, Av Plan, um, Electronic Flight Book uh, Bag, EFB. One's called Oz Runways. And the other one is called Jefferson. So these proprietary providers of aeronautical data, I have to use them or I have to use that in order to be compliant with um, Regulation 175. <clears throat> so if you don't know me, for those of you who don't know me, I deeply resent this. Um, I am being legislated to use proprietary hardware and software. If you go back, I'll show you, like it says, on the bottom here, Oz runways on an iPad or an iPhone. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, so, uh, and in a safety critical, I mean, I, I wouldn't care if it was my washing machine so much. But I'm in an aeroplane, and I put a side leg. And this is no joke, this is what happened when I installed Oz runways. On my proprietary hardware device, this happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's no <laughs> shit. <laughs> so I did eventually get it working, um, but I guess what I'm saying is, um, <clears throat> if this happened to me while I was flying, my resentment <laughs> would be a safety hazard. <laughs> 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 not cool. Um, so. That's Oz Runways. I plan I've not tried, um, but I'm told that it fails at georectification. So basically, when you use these applications, all they've done is taken the image, it's an image file, or a shape file, I think it is, of these aeronautical maps, and they, they and you sort of fly across the image. Oh, wow. Um, but I'm it's told flat, right? that Avplan um, has really failed at gear. So I might get my $100 scanner and see if I can do it better. Um, yeah, basically, it doesn't line up. So you're sort of like, going oh, along. Well, Oh, you're 10 kilometers over there now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I assert the following. That's the end of my winch. I think it is anyway. Um, Regulation 175 demands that I use unsafe and inferior aeronautical data. It's not very nice. Um, oh, and by the way, so um, there's a thing called um, advisories, or CAAPs. So, it's, so this is a, uh, an abbreviated CAAP. 233. So if you're a, you hold an operating certificate, you know you can, you you would ask the following things. You know, does have I met these, you know, these criteria? Um, has the software application been evaluated to confirm that the information being provided is true and accurate? So these are, um, or, or even more to the point, does the software application have adequate security measures? Um, people who fly airplanes are not trained in information security. Nor are they trained in evaluating to confirm that the computational solution being provided to the pilot is true and accurate. Um, I think this is a gaping hole. I don't know about you. I, mean, I write software. I make mistakes all day long. Um, I'm pretty sure that, I mean, I, I wouldn't like to rely on this. Um, I think that's the end of my winch now. So yes, it is. So please help. All right, so basically, um, Really what I wanted to talk to you about is uh, something called ADS-B. Um, I'll tell you what ADS-B is. Um, so it's an electronic system aboard aircraft and it broadcasts certain information about that aircraft. Um, it's internationally used. Um, and anyone can receive the signal. <clears throat> an example of what comes off an ADS-B transmission is uh, the 
international identifier for the airframe, so all airframes have an identifier. The flight identifier, the, you know, the flight name, if you, you all know what a flight name is. Uh, the position of the aircraft, the integrity of that position, um, altitude, which can be measured by barometric pressure or by GPS, um, whether that aircraft is climbing or descending, the ground track, the speed, and whether or not the, the aircraft um, has any emergency indicators. Yep. This might be a stupid question, but I don't know if you remember the Malaysia flight that went missing. Yes. Few, yes. I do. If, you you if mean 370, right? Yes, and if all this information is available, then mm. shouldn't it have been easy to find them? That's a good question. So the answer to the question is, yeah. I'll show you, I will actually pick up some aircraft in a minute, yeah. but the answer to the question is, if 370 went where it's hypothesized that it did, yeah. um, out in the Indian Ocean, there are no uh, receivers within the range of that aircraft. Oh, not even other planes? Well, that's the answer. So, okay. So this is a bit of a side rant, because I have this side rant, which is, if I, if I can transmit ADS-B, if, so if you look at all the aeroplanes in the sky right now, and they're all transmitting ADS-B, and they pass each other, and that thing there will pick up 100 nautical miles, all right? We pass each other within 50 nautical miles, and I tell you, you're the other, I say, hey, I'm here, I'm tracking this way, I'm at this height, I'm level, blah, 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 and you store that, and then you go and land, or you might pass it on to yet another aeroplane, uh, we can just imagine this is like a distributed mesh network of the aeroplanes. And, and then if we got all of that data, if, so let's imagine it existed. We got all of that data for the day that that aeroplane went missing. And let's ask this question. Given that data, could we find it? Yes. Uh, Maybe. That cost, me, that cost me 200 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'll show you what I can do in a minute. Yeah. Well, I think so too, right? So, or at least we could narrow it down. And in fact, that's, that's I, I, I mean, it's not made public, but I believe that's what search teams have tried to do with the available data. So it's not like they're on the wrong track. It's more like um, they don't, you know, aviation uses this commodity hardware, right? So there's an ADS-B receiver. You went to buy that, a certified copy of that, a certified version. It's going to cost you 15 grand or something like that. So there's all these limitations. Um, and so the data that's available is, you know, they're using the satellite data, right? So you can't have every, every aeroplane talking to satellites. That's not going to work. Um, you know, there's all kinds of questions that are, I think it's a really good question. And I think the answer is maybe we wouldn't be able to find it. We could get really reliable answers about where to look or, you know, sort of narrow it down. But I think so. I might be wrong. It's, this is my question to the world, actually. It's like, come on, I can do that. <clears throat> so... Um, ADS-B has this revision history. Uh, there's no uh, B, C, and S, I think, or something. ADS is broadcast on 1090 megahertz. Um, and 978 in some countries. You know, so you get weather on that one, I think. And uh, apparently all IFR aircraft will be noticed by 2017. That's what the regulations say, anyway. So we can receive MODIS ADS-B with a software digital radio. So Raspberry Pi, a DVD tuner, and a 1090 megahertz antenna. We can also do more. <clears throat> so I'll show you some of the data that we can actually get um, using cheap hardware, um, and, then, and then maybe sort of ask that kind of question. Um, so of course, those of you who are concerned about security are asking this obvious question. It's like, hang on a minute, I'm just going to spoof the ASV signal and pretend I'm an aeroplane. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, you can do that. <laughs> um, so some guy did it with a thousand dollars. So that's a that's a receiver only. Um, if I put a transmitter on there and say, "Hey, everyone, I'm a uh, Boeing 737. I'm sitting in the CSIRO office right now." <laughs> so I could do that. It's not hard. <laughs> and you know, you can imagine, and you know, I'm at three thousand feet, and then we could start watching the traffic like doing all this. It can be done. It can be done. Very so, yeah, that exists. Um, and you know, if I wanted to be malicious, could I make aeroplanes start doing U-turns in the sky? Pretty sure I could for a thousand bucks, not hard. <clears throat> Um, anyway, let's do some receiving, um, and then uh, we'll transmit over TCP, which I think we're all familiar with. So basically, this is um, this device sitting out here on this table um, while I was making it. Uh, but basically, I just want to show you how to do it. Um, I'm going to talk to it using Haskell. Um, 
that's just a messy thing at my house. <laughs> um, but anyway, here it is here. All right, so this is the inside of that thing. Um, so, oh, oh, I've labeled it here. So there's the, uh, someone asked me during a piece of time what's in there. There are two USB um, DVD tuners. Um, and uh, at the moment there are two 1090 megahertz uh, antennas on it. On each of those, you can see the pigtails running over there. It's the an antennas. Uh, how much does that cost? Ten bucks each. <coughs> okay. What about the aerials? Um, they're they're uh, made by uh, a guy in the USA, so I don't know, they're about twenty bucks each or something. Um, there's a copper ground plane. That's the ground plane there for the aerials. That copper that you can see in the background there. Um, I tried installing it to Amanda. Um, <laughs> I, this is a prank on Amanda more than anything. But yeah, no signals were received. <laughs> oh no, I just sort of look nice in her hair. <clears throat> All right, there's a Raspberry Pi. Does everyone? Does anyone not know what a Raspberry Pi is? Ooh, I don't have one with me. I'm sure yes, you there'll do. be one upstairs. In the box. Well, yeah, yes. I don't have one easily accessible. With me. Um, so yeah, it's a little computer. A little. Uh, so we think it's about that big. <clears throat> um, they cost about 70 bucks. Um, so, so the Raspberry Pi has onboard Wi-Fi and it is broadcasting Wi-Fi signal. Um, there's also a Wi-Fi client. And so what this device does is it connects um, over SSH to my house and broadcasts everything that it is uh, receiving on its sensors. That costs that much. That's a GPS antenna. Um, I could, for example, mount it on the outside of a metal aircraft. <clears throat> um, provides track and ground speed. That costs 20 bucks. And this is my favourite thing in the whole whole uh, kit, which is this this device here. It's got a gyrometer, so we know if, if the if it's roll pitching or yawing. Got a, a compass in it, a magnetic compass barometer, so I can get the air pressure. It's got a thermometer, although it doesn't really work because it's inside a box, so it's good, it fits. It's, you know, it's always at like 35 degrees or something because inside of the boxes. And it does have a um, GPS um, backup and they cost $35. And a battery. <clears throat> All right, so if you, if you uh, well, actually, that's the web, the, the uh, software runs a web server. So this is just a request to the web server and it's asking for the GPS of the web server. And there's an, an example of the aircraft traffic. So basically says, uh, say this aircraft here on the second row, it's uh, flight number QFA547, it's doing 275 knots, so 10,250 feet, and it is climbing at 3,500 feet a second on a course of 200 degrees, and its current location is that latitude and longitude. And the signal received from it was that strong, uh, 0.8 seconds ago. <clears throat> so let's do some code, all right? So basically, this is this is actually all the information I get from the ADSB. So what traffic exists? Um, so basically, this is a Haskell record, and it's you know I get the tail number, whether or not it's on the ground, um, you know, the signal level, latitude, longitude, altitude, and so on. And I can also ask for the situation, which is basically the situation of the ADSB transmitter itself. Um, and I actually, so there's a bit more than that. So that's where your roll pitch and roll pitch and gyrometer heading. Oh, you all. <clears throat> so I can ask for all these things. Um, so what the device is doing right now is, is um, although I can access it from this laptop, it is connecting over my phone because the CSIRO network is broken, um, and uh, then uh, going to my house, creating an SSH tunnel which reverses back in on the web server, and so you can access it too. Um, <clears throat> so let's write some code. How am I going for time, Ben? Uh, it's seven thirty. Half an hour. So okay. Easy take, fifteen twenty minutes. If you want. All right. So we can see here that our GPS has an accuracy of within three thousand kilometres. <laughs> I might go and put it outside. <laughs> Someone want to do that one. On a universal scale, he's I got that. Thanks, man. It is, it is a bit more than 30 degrees at the moment, too. Cool. Cheers. Anywhere in particular? 
You don't worry about it? Oh, just so I can see the sky. Yeah, it is B, we'll pick it up straight away. Cool. I mean, he can also... Ben. Yeah, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> so Ben's heading at 147 uh, something. Very He's nice. all over the shop. <clears throat> Next question is how good is the Wi-Fi on your phone? Ah, oh, that's good enough. Yeah, should be right. Depends on how far away you're going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, OBS has gone too far actually. Where is he? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's locked out. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll know where it's going. <laughs> Running out of left. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> hey, 48 minutes. All right, yeah. Very Same much here. thought that I needed to leave a sign saying not a bomb. Please leave me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, what I'm you can't tell that's not a bomb. You're a failure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> too bad. So, yeah, that's, I don't know, that's if we, that looks like, at this office, I don't know, let's try it. Um, let's have a look at it. So this is a website. Oh, it's my wireless broken. Everyone's looking up your website. I hope not. <laughs> That's broken. Maps is broken. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's do that. Okay. How far did you put it away? <laughs> Just to the garage. Uh, Is it too far? Maybe. <laughs> it's got to go through a few walls. Oh, too much in the way. It keeps history, doesn't it? Uh, that, I haven't done that. But it could. It's got plenty of storage on it. Excellent question. Yes. Imagine keeping a history flying past another airplane and saying, hey, this is where I've been. Well, that's what you were saying before. Yeah. The mesh network. I'm still really concerned about security. Uh, don't you need to solve the issues of the problem? Oh, yeah. Or yeah. whatever before yeah. you start relying on this? Oh, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Getting a CA search hard enough. Now you have to give it to planes? Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. Um, oh, there's all kinds of problems that would happen. I mean, certification for one. Yeah. You wouldn't just be able to put it in aeroplanes. Um, but uh, the security issues relate to ADSB themselves. right? So it is not hard for me to say I am an aeroplane here right now and you know all the, all the ones that are flying around right now will receive that as has happened before people have spoofed uh, uh, not that I'm not in the malicious attempt that I know of is ADSB an open standard or is it all proprietary it is open yeah in fact the, the software that's running is open source right so that's how they did it is that any better that's just in that window on the outside so yay all right so we're receiving three airplanes all right. Yeah, so flight QJE 1553 is at 360 knots. It's climbing from 13,000 feet. So um, I agree with you. I mean, should we be concerned about security? Yes, but it's not hard just to make up stuff as it stands. Yeah, yeah. Like, surprising. Yeah. Does that surprise you? Yeah. <laughs> really? I mean, so I didn't mean to. It's not the only case, like, okay. security, security hold, but yeah, it'll, it'll surprise you every time. Well, it raises another question, right, which is um, how, you know, imagine being in command of an aeroplane and you receive this signal that there's another aeroplane in front of you. And you hang on a minute, this just could be some kid in his garage with a thousand dollars worth of hardware. And you, 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 should you rely on that? What's the whole... You wouldn't now. <laughs> All right, man. It's the whole trust your instruments thing again. Individually, they'll lie to you on a collective. They're probably good. Well, there's, res there's trusting your instruments to know about the state of your aeroplane. Mm. I'm just talking about, well, is there one in front of you, right? So, yeah. we, you know, is there a mountain? I don't know, let me just find out. Yeah. <laughs> but you can block it at an airport, but it's virtual traffic. Yeah, I know, yes, you could. So you, you could deny a service attack signal as well, right? Which is, yeah. you would know that you're under attack, but you would just... You just Everyone go land somewhere else and, and run out of fuel. Yeah, and they definitely rely on that. Um, this is the fault to die out <laughs> I, I hope I don't inspire some kid to go and do this, but I'm yeah, saying it is definitely possible and easy. Yeah. Alright. So I've written a little bit of code here. 
I don't know, I'll give it to you. So basically, if you uh, go to this address, um, you will see that website. But we can actually also ask for things like, I don't know, what is the, uh, the current role on the uh, gyrometer? Um, so that'll return me either a string or a floating point value, which will be the role value um, within IO. So let's run that. I've got a function that will run in the role on it at the moment. Hmm. Your network things happening right now. That's not updating. While we're waiting on the network, I've got a question. Mm -hmm. So on the left hand side of that either, yep. I think the type there is string, right? Yeah, so I know. So what are you going to possibly hope to do with that string, Tony? Yeah. <laughs> Take the length of it? <laughs> I'm going to rewrite the whole. ADSB software and fix that. You should submit a pull request. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But I mean, when I did this, I I knew one of you would do it. I knew one of you would ask. Um, you should have had a betting pool. I will next time. I use string. But yeah, um, you know, for some, for those of you who don't know, I if I see strings and error messages. Um, I'll, I'll have a fit at you and swear at you and wrestle you and make you go and fix the code. And here I am, I'm doing exactly that. So that's George's point. And it's recorded and will be up on YouTube. It's on video. <laughs> yeah. Should have replaced any before you. Yeah. 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 I should have just said. Yeah. Ooh, camera's not happy. <laughs> Would you have noticed then? <laughs> Just twiddle the, like, zoom it out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I don't know what's happening with that network. But, yeah. Oh. That means the only place that it will work is on the windowsill. And I was worried about it sliding off, so I moved it from the windowsill. Oh, right. I could just move my phone closer, actually. I can, I can take your phone. To... My phone's out there. Oh, okay. It's on my, it's on my desk. So if I put it in the kitchen, yeah, 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 that's fine. The egg out. <laughs> 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 all right. So how is the mobile reception up on the plane? <laughs> uh, it's all right if you like. Yeah. Not in a big metal cylinder. Sorry. And not in a big metal cylinder. Oh yeah, I don't know about that. I don't. I s don't you switch that off before flying? What the plane? No. No, no, no. Your transmitting device. I don't know. Pilot says it's okay. No, I think when you, when you get to like 2,500 feet, you can't really get much. Which is which is a problem, right? Which is why we want to do the recording and then. Well, it's all we want, we want, across we the We want a mesh network at various altitudes, right? <clears throat> anyway, it's not too exciting. It will say whatever negative 10.3 or whatever it'll say, right? Um, and you know, I can get the pitch and roll and the heading, the temperature and latitude and so on. Um, this can all be, I guess the point is you can all, you can program against this thing and you can, you can get these values and I have done it, believe me, it's not working right now. So you've, the network. you've pasted it in IRC, right? Sorry? you pasted some of that in IRC. Yes, right? actually, um, it won't work, but there's this shutdown button here, right? So, again, security issues. But yeah, you can actually turn this off. Um, so a friend of mine did that once. I said, hey, look at, look at this. And he goes, oh, cool, you can turn it off. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not, not even at home to go and turn it back on. <laughs> Should have put it on there. Anyway, thanks for listening. Um, that's my introduction to aviation and programming. That's what I think. Cheers. <laughs>
I did a flight this morning, uh, which is this one here on the 9th of the 8th. Again, strings. That's been fixed actually, multiple version 2. Cool. Um, Quite a lot of strings. Shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, and th this, this happened. So. so, why not use a database like SQLite? Well, that is a database. Not a flat file. Well, why not a flat file? Can I use lenses on a database? Oh, yeah, I mean, well, it gives you a different <laughs> query language as well if you want to do something weird. So you can have both, the best of both worlds. Yeah, I don't well, well, hang on, the best of both worlds, what's the one that I'm missing? SQL. So if you put it in a database... I don't, I don't miss SQL, though. Like, I like lenses. Fair enough. You are missing good indexes, though. Indexes? I will, I will pay that. I mean, this is a list, right? Yeah. Like in the history of Git, I imagine. Oh, and the history of Git, yes. So, Casa goes, where's your logbook? Lost it. Lost it on Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I won't have that excuse because it's not possible. Unless you don't back up, like, the Git well, history. Well, yeah, yeah. So, I, I push it to home and I push it to the internet as well. So, if home and the internet blows up, we have got bigger problems. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be fighting for survival against yes. mutants or something. And I'll need my logbook so I can get in the aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, cool. Thanks, guys. Cool.